This video involves programming as well as an amazing story. So let's get started. Programming in itself is a powerful subject and when something is so much powerful, it's okay to have so many fantasies around it. And surely sometime it's capable of fulfilling these fantasies. Everybody just thinks that programming is such a magical thing that whenever I'm going to learn, I'm going to have a billion dollar idea just after learning it. Sometimes, in fact many of the time, it's true, but sometimes programming is not about having a billion dollar idea. You can have a simplest idea that the problem that you are facing and you can just make your life better and easier. I'm going to share a story about this new app that we rolled out uh, just last week. This is Audio To Do, a simple to do app in the audio format. Now this app doesn't serve any ads, doesn't have any login feature and neither we prompt up as of now for any premium feature upgrade or buying anything. It's just a simple app that records your to do in the audio format. But there is a very interesting story behind the creation of this app. The story of this app actually goes way back when I traveled to China. It was a one month long trip to China and definitely I have a ton of stories to share right from when I set when I got my plane, I boarded the plane and went to China. I was sitting at Delhi airport inside a plane for continuous five hours, but that's a com completely different story uh, for sharing for another day. Let's come back onto the situation. So I was in China and as you know, life in the China is a little bit struggle because you don't have Google Maps or anything. And I'm totally used to reaching out anywhere through Google Maps. And uh, since no Google Map, I lost my way to hotel and I was feeling really hungry. So I said, ah, we're gonna figure out the hotel stuff later on. Right now I'm hungry, I just want to grab a sandwich and probably if I'm able to convey my thoughts to this Chinese guy, I may be able to get a nice tea as well. Somehow after a few struggle, I got my sandwich. It was a nice cozy restaurant. I sat down there and was enjoying my sandwich. A group of people, a group of students came by to the same restaurant and just I was sitting there and one of them said hi and I said hi too. I said, uh, do you know English? And he said, yeah, I know English. So they were students and they were trying to brush up their English skills by talking to a foreign person. It was okay. It happens to every single country that people are sometimes a little bit overwhelming to the person who's coming from another country. So I didn't mind it. And we had a little bit chit chat. One thing that I couldn't stop noticing there was the way how these students were texting to each other and to other persons as well. Now, in case you don't know, I come from a country, India, where texting is definitely uh, a different way how it's done. I don't know how about other countries do it. Definitely not China, but how we do it in India. We use our thumbs to just type all these text messages. Now, we all of us are aware that we do have audio messages, we do have video messages, but at least in my circle and to the person that I know, we don't use audios that much. But that's a complete different scenario in China. I noticed that all these students actually just press their button and just say the message and just deliver it. Whenever the message comes up, they just hold the phone just like that. And this, it was a little bit surprising to me for at first because this is the first time I was seeing so much of the usage of the audio. I'm aware that WhatsApp and all these chatting applications provide you this feature, but using it so much like in incredibly and so much in the distribution, it was a little bit new to me. Since I was having conversation with this Chinese student, I couldn't stop myself. Uh, I said, hey, uh, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you a question. I said, please go ahead. And I asked him that uh, in our country, we don't use that much of the audio messages and video messages. We are still on the typing phase. Uh, so what's your thought? Why do you use that much of audio when you can just deliver a text and when he can read it whenever he like? Probably he's in a position where he cannot read the audio and stuff. The answer was pretty interesting and he said that yeah, we do deliver text messages sometime but most of the time we prefer audio messages because in the text you cannot convey your emotions that are really associated because sometimes it happens to everybody that your tone was sarcastic but somebody got it in a different meaning or probably you were happy, somebody got it in an angry mode. It happens all the time. So he said that's why we prefer and sometimes the idea is a little bit more big that I can convey my thought much more easily in the audio format. And I said, yeah, that is true but still I'm not convinced enough to use these as audio feature still. I still don't use it much. Now fast forward this to 2018. So I got much more interested in YouTube and I got my to-do app 
there are hundreds of them in the market so it doesn't matter which one I got so I got my YouTube stuff more interesting I was making tons of videos in order to make a YouTube video I need a topic a lot of topics just come into my brain I just write them down sometimes and sometimes I forget about them so I got really frustrated with all all those to do app that I was sometimes writing my ideas in the to do apps and sometimes the message was too short that I forgot what I really want to deliver and sometimes the description was a little bit hard to write because the way how I wanted to make a video it was difficult to just jot it down in a piece of paper or even in a to do app. So what do you think at this point what a programmer will do? I created my own app. I wanted an app which can store my to-do list in the audio format. Not a big deal to do. I did that and I start using that. For almost like eight or nine months, constantly I was using this app. But there was a small issue. I didn't ever release this app. I always was using it for my personal use and whenever I had to change my phone, the app actually got lost and I had to recreate this. Surely I could have pushed it onto the Git, could have saved it. But sometimes, just like you, I am also lazy, I don't do it. Now before having a to-dos in the audio format, I know that I have written down these to-dos and these awesome video ideas and app ideas onto the to-do list. And then when I was reading them, they were not exactly the same thought that I was thinking at the time of writing these things. When I check them a week later or a month later, I don't get the gist of it. I don't get the feel that what I really wanted to do in this video or what I wanted to do in this next app idea that I'm having. And having this audio to do app helped me in having my ideas in the exact same thought and exact same tone that I want to have it. It helped me so much. But the problem was for almost eight or nine months, let's just say a year, I was using it just for a personal app. So this year, just almost a week ago, I thought, hey, let's just release this app and put this idea in front of many people so that they can also take advantage of it. Now, I don't want to create an app which is a competition for any other to-do app. Surely we are capable of that, we are having a good team, we can design an amazing to-do app. But the whole idea was to do just one simple thing and do it right without using much of the resources. So we are not using any of the login feature, any databases in this app. Just a simple to-do app that helps you to capture your idea. And I think if you are a YouTuber who is watching this video or any other person who makes a lot of apps or business ideas or entrepreneur or something like that, just go ahead, use this app. You're going to find it amazingly awesome. The interface is super simple. Just tap on a button, record your idea and just save it. That's what it does. That's it. So from an idea that came into a restaurant in the China uh, that inspired me somehow is the reason why we are having an audio to do app. The link is in the description section and just try to use this app. Probably the next idea for your video, for your app or, or your daily task. You can just record it and just save it. Of course, it's a little bit different experience for what we are used to of writing these things. It's going to be a little bit different, but of course, we have to move into the next phase of life. We have moved from reading text to watching uh, these photos to watching these videos. So why not in the to-dos? So go ahead. The link is in the description. The app is totally ad-free, no logins, just a simple to-do app. That's all it is. Now surely programming is powerful but not all the time you need a billion dollar or million dollar idea to just a reason for learning programming. You can make your daily life simpler just like I did. And uh, surely next time when you think that I am having some trouble just create an app for it or maybe a web application or anything like that. It's not always about creating the biggest possible app or the next revolution. Sometimes it's about small ideas and just make your life happier. And of course, in case you are interested in learning how these app development is done in Flutter, in React Native, in Core Android or in Kotlin or anything like that, we do have courses for all of them. And of course, our team is always there to help you to answer all of your questions along with the certificate. So go ahead, check out learncodeonline.in and I'm going to surely catch you up in some another video and you might be wondering hey Vish if the video is over why are you still here I'm still here because I'm waiting for you to hit that subscribe button because I know most of you haven't yet done it so go ahead hit that and I'll be gone poof like that okay you can do it whenever you like so I'm gonna go and prepare for the Saturday live now
see 